me review the chain rule in one variable. So in one variable, the idea is we have f is a function of x, and we have another function that's a function of t, and we can compute the derivative with respect to t of the function you get by composing these two. So f of g of t. Well, the chain rule just says that the derivative of this new function is, is f prime of g of t times g prime of t. And there's sort of a shorthand for this. If we think of, uh, in terms of variables, y as a function of x and x as a function of t, the shorthand or Leibniz notation you might be familiar with is dy dt equals dy dx times dx dt. And this is very easy to remember, but it's also a little misleading because you have to remember to plug in this, this g of t. And although this is just one variable stuff, it's probably useful for me to uh, go through applying this uh, in a simple example really quick. So for example, if I just have the function h of x equals e to the minus x squared, this can be thought of as one function plugged into another. Namely, if I write f of u is just the exponential function and g of x is negative x squared, well, h can then be written as f with g plugged in, because all you're doing is taking this part, which is negative x squared, and putting that in the exponent. And as you should, you should already know, the way we compute the derivative of this is, well, we first take the derivative of this as if we just have the variable u here, so we have um, the derivative of the exponential function with g plugged in, so this is f prime with g of x plugged in times g prime, which is negative 2x. So that's the chain rule in one variable. The chain rule in two variables, well, here's one beginning version of it. We start with f is a function of two variables, x and y. And we're going to plug in a function g of t in for x and another function h of t in for y. And we're thinking of computing the derivative of this function that we get here. So we'll see some examples of when you might do this um, later, but in any case, the formula is, is we have the partial of f with respect to the first variable x with g and h plugged in times g prime of t plus partial with respect to y with g and h plugged in times h prime of t. So this big long formula also has a shorthand um, in Leibniz notation. So again, we'll think of um, a new variable. Think of z as a function of x and y. We'll think of x as a function of t. And we'll think of y as a function of t as well, given by g and h respectively. So then the shorthand is if I'm taking the partial, I'm sorry, if I'm taking the derivative, I'm taking the normal derivative of z with respect to t, that is given by uh, df dx times dx dt plus df dy 
times dy dt. So this is the shorthand in Leibniz notation. And now let me go through an example. So I have, let's take something simple. Let's say f is just x times y. And I want to plug in g of t is sine t and h of t is e to the t. Well, what this means is I'm taking, I'm taking f and I'm plugging in sine t and e to the t, which given the function, this is just sine of t times e to the t. And we want to compute the derivative of this function. Well, we already know how to do this using the product rule. So the product rule says, says that the derivative of this thing, so let me write it out. is the first times the derivative of the second. So sine times the derivative of e to the t is just e to the t, plus derivative of the first is cosine of t times the second. Well, that's what the product rule says. And let's see if we get the same thing using the chain rule. So again, I have. f is x, y, g of t is sine t, h of t is e to the t. And the chain rule says that that the derivative of this thing will be partial of f with respect to x with these two functions plugged in. times the derivative of g. So let's just figure out what the things in here are first. Uh, notice that df dx is just y. So if I plug g of t and h of t into this function, I just get h of t. So this part is e to the t. And then the derivative of g is the derivative of sine, which is cosine. So that's the first part, and then we have this other part involving y. So that's the partial with respect to y with g and h plugged in times the derivative of h. And again, I can do a side computation. Partial of f with respect to y is just going to be x. And then if I plug g of t and h of t into this function, I'm just getting g of t right there, which is sine of t. And then I'm multiplying by h prime of t, the derivative of e to the t is itself. So the answer that you get is the same as what you get with the product rule. And so you might be wondering, well, why bother with this? We already have the product rule. And I should say, I'll get into to that more later, but the chain rule is mostly uh, a conceptual device that will be used in the next section and uh, in other times later.